right, good morning everyone. Chapter five is about trigonometric functions. Everybody's favorite pre-calculus subject, I know. Um, so one thing I wanna let you know that happens for all of the chapter five um, PowerPoints and videos is that I have the solutions included in the slides. I am still gonna work through every problem in these recordings, but uh, when you have access to the PowerPoints, you can go and um, check your work, even if I don't have the video posted day after the lecture. So section 5.1 is about angles and their measure. This section primarily focuses on converting between degrees and radians um, and minutes and seconds, finding arc length, area of a uh, sector, and things like that. So when two rays are drawn with a common vertex, they form an angle. We call one ray of an angle the initial side and the other the terminal side. So here we have a counter, and we're always going to rotate counterclockwise. So not like a clock, opposite of that. So here I have a counterclockwise rotation of a positive angle. Hi, Bobby. Here I have counterclockwise of a negative angle. See, we took my initial side and we went clockwise, that would give us a negative angle. And here we have a positive angle, but it is greater than 360 degrees. One full rotation is 360 degrees. I should probably just wonder some talking. An angle theta, ooh, this is the Greek letter theta, theta. An angle theta is said to be in standard position if its vertex is at the origin of our xy coordinate plane and the initial side coincides with a positive x axis. So our initial side is on our x axis where it's positive, so over here. So here we have an example of a positive angle, right? It's rotating counterclockwise, that makes it positive and it is in the standard position. Here on the right we have a negative angle because we rotated clockwise. So when I have an angle theta in standard position, either the terminal side will lie in a quadrant, which is the case, um, which if that's the case, we say that theta lies in the quadrant. And remember there are four quadrants, quadrant one, two, three, and four, and those quadrants are named counterclockwise. Um, or our terminal side will lie on the x-axis or y-axis unless we, in that case, we say that theta is a quadrantal angle. So in example C, theta is a quadrantal angle, but in example A, our theta lies in quadrant two, and in example B, our theta lies in quadrant four. And remember, this is a negative angle, and this is a positive angle. I don't know why I wrote it out. I could have just done like positive, negative, but oh well. The angle formed by rotating our initial side exactly once in the counterclockwise direction, so let's look at example A, exactly once in the counterclockwise direction until it coincides with itself is one full revolution, and that is said to measure 360 degrees. And we use this little degree symbol to annotate degrees. One degree is one 360th of a revolution. A right angle is an angle that measures 90 degrees, or one fourth of a revolution, and a straight angle, that's just gonna be form a straight line, is an angle that measures 180 degrees, or one half of a revolution. Now, this may be, ooh, gotta erase this. This may be a new concept, and you might be like, okay, where, where have I seen minutes and seconds before? Well, minutes and seconds are used to denote um, location on a map, uh, well, on like a globe. So for example, if I have, if I have like 40 degrees, two minutes, 52 seconds, maybe you have it on your sweatshirt you got from Palm Springs or wherever, right? This is denotes a latitude and longitude. So we're gonna learn how to convert between degrees, minutes, and seconds so that we can write any angle in terms of degrees, minutes, and seconds. 